What I've got here is some rather impure magnetite. It's probably tainted with iron 3 hydroxide, like this orange patch on top, but you can see it's dark brownish, because that's well mixed. So this video will be showing you how to make magnetite, and I got the inspiration for this from two things. One, I need a magnetite for some battery electrodes that I wanted to make. I'm not sure I'll continue it, because it turned out to be quite similar to something that's already patented. The other reason is that I had a project in school where we were given a mysterious rock and we were supposed to identify it, and it was magnetite. And if you're a student from that school, I'm sorry, I'm not sh I think I was not supposed to tell you that. But anyways, so I decided to take the project farther and I'm going to make my own magnetite. So it's really easy and it's possible through electrochemistry, which is my favorite branch because you can make almost anything from it. Your electrolyte solution, and I've just added a salt so it's a bit cloudy, it's not all dissolved. It should be uh, one part salt to six parts water. You don't need to be too exact, but try to get within that range. Next, all you need is a 9 volt battery. Strap iron electrodes to it, in other words, paper clips. You see how this is so easy? And you just stick into the solution. You see, at one electrode, the negative one, there's bubbles. The other one, there's not. There should be oxygen bubbles, but there's not, because the iron is reacting with the chloride ions to form iron chloride. And on the other side, the sodium will re react with the hydroxide ions that didn't turn into oxygen, form sodium hydroxide. And this is the classical way of making uh, iron 2 hydroxide, which is the precursor to magnetite. So then, they react to form iron 2 hydroxide. S sodium chloride that was originally there. So, this is called the Shikor process. Not this part, but the next part. But the Shikor process is what this whole thing is based off. So, sodium 2 hydroxide is greenish, but you can see the solution is yellow. That's the iron chloride. So why is it not reacting? Because we need to give it a nice good stir. And it will instantly turn green. See, it's a uh, pale greenish. So, if you want to make nanoparticles, you could probably use a b different solvent that will match the nanoparticle's surface energy, or you could use a surfactant, or you could just use a dilute solution of this. This is already too concentrated f because it will agglomerate, or you could use a sonicator to make sure they don't agglomerate. It. But for my purposes, I don't need nanoparticles, so I'm fine with the macros, macro particles. Um. Next, you have your iron 2 hydroxide, you want it to settle. Make sure it doesn't come close to the surface, because that's where it will oxidize to form iron 3 hydroxide, which is pretty useless for our purposes. So, the cycle process is when iron 2 hydroxide is decomposed in an anaerobic condition to form iron 3 oxide. Iron 3 oxide, oxide in 4, sorry. So, uh... I guess that makes sense because a lot of oxides can be formed by decomposing the hydroxides. But this must be done underwater or in the absence of air. Because in air, it will either form iron oxide hydroxide or plain rust. So, now that you've got your solution of iron 2 hydroxide, I'm going to demonstrate how it's not magnetic. Nothing's happening. So, the cycle process will be sped up by heat, obviously. I'm not sure if it occurs at room temperature, but the heat is really simple to make. Uh, you, you'll put it in bursts in the microwave, and make sure you don't melt the container. Heat, the duration of time, you, you should base it on your logic. For this size container, I say 4 or 5 seconds maximum. So that gets it steaming, and then the conversion currents might get the iron 2 hydroxide up onto your surface, give it a stir, and it should settle. So, you can see it's not exactly settling, so I should probably stir it later. But it's not, not at the top either, so it's not too risky. So, after it starts steaming, you, it's hard to see the steam, but it's a light steam. It's just the water. You should um, 
wait for it to cool down again and then reheat it over and over uh, for a 5 second burst. Try not to melt the container. So eventually you'll notice the green starts turning darker. And if you hold up a magnet, there will be slight magnetism. So after a long time of heating, you'll eventually get it to be at least a blackish brown. It should be a bluish black, but if it oxidizes, it will turn blackish blackish brown. So uh, you could either just heat it before it turns blackish brown until it's all black, or you could get the impurities out of here just by putting some acid in, which should dissolve the iron 3 hydroxide, but leave the magnetite behind. So, uh, that was a pretty easy way of making magnetite, and I hope you learned something.